Today is the Feast of All Saints. The epistle is from the Apocalypse. Chapter 7. In those days, behold, I, John, saw another angel ascending from the rising of the sun, having the sign of the living God, and he cried with a loud voice to the four angels, to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea, saying, Hurt not the earth, nor the sea, nor the trees, till we sign the servants of our God on their foreheads. And I heard the number of them that were signed, a hundred and forty-four thousand were signed, of the, every tribe of the children of Israel. Of the tribe of Judah were twelve thousand signed, of the tribe of Reuben twelve thousand signed, of the tribe of Gad twelve thousand signed, of the tribe of Azer twelve thousand signed, of the tribe of Naphtali twelve thousand signed, of the tribe of Manasseh twelve thousand signed, of the tribe of Simeon twelve thousand signed, of the tribe of Levi twelve thousand signed, of the tribe of Issachar twelve thousand signed, of the tribe of Zabalon. 12,000 sign of the tribe of Joseph, 12,000 sign of the tribe of Benjamin, 12,000 signed. After this, I saw a great multitude, which no man could number, of all nations and tribes and peoples and tongues, standing before the throne and in sight of the Lamb, clothed with the white robes and palms in their hands. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our God, who sitteth upon the throne, and to, and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood around about the throne, and the ancients, and the four living creatures, and they fell down before the throne upon their faces, and adored God, saying, Amen, benediction, and glory, and wisdom, and thanksgiving honor and power and strength to our God forever and ever. Amen. The Holy Gospel from St. Matthew chapter 5. At that time Jesus, seeing the multitudes, went up into a mountain, and when he was sat down, his disciples came unto him, and opening his mouth he taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are the meek, for they shall possess the land. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are they that hunger and thirst after justice, for they shall have their fill. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the clean of heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they that suffer persecution for justice's sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they shall revile you and persecute you and speak all that is evil against you untruly. For my sake, be glad and rejoice, for your reward is very great in heaven. Thus are the words of the Holy Gospel. <clears throat> Tomorrow is All Souls Day. The Masses, three in a row, will begin at 7.15 in the morning. They'll follow one after the other. And after the third Mass, that will be the Mass with the Sermon, that will be the Mass with the Absolution of the Catafalque, a catafalque is a imitation coffin that's covered with the black pall as a real dead body would be. And it just signifies all the dead, that we pray for all the dead. So tomorrow is that day, and that will be the schedule of the Masses. 7.15, followed by two Masses in a row. Also, today is First Friday, All Saints, so it's a very big, big day, and offer our Holy Communions today, especially as our Lord asked St. Margaret Mary in reparation to the Sacred Heart of Jesus, 
who is so insulted, so forgotten, so blasphemed and ignored. And we want to make reparation to the Sacred Heart of Jesus. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Today our Lord speaks of the eight Beatitudes. Let's look at closer at the third Beatitude. Blessed are they that mourn. In the Arabic, it means blessed are the sad, for they shall be comforted, who mourn not in flesh but in spirit. For the words in spirit from verse 3 are to be repeated in all these Beatitudes. Blessed are they that mourn not for the loss of wealth or their parents or friends, but for the loss of spiritual things. Grief here is taken as something holy. It is opposed to those who laugh and overflow with joy on account of mundane prosperity. Those whom the world applauds as blessed. St. David says in the Psalms, Why, O Lord, do, why do those who hate you and ignore you seem to prosper in this world? Why do they have everything and everything goes smooth for them and everything goes well for them? They don't seem to have a worry at all in their life. They have all their material wealth, they have everything comfortable, and why, why do your, your, those who serve you suffer so much? And that's a leg legitimate complaint, and the answer is given by our Lord and by St. Alphonsus. St. Alphonsus Luguri says, those who are going to hell, who have chosen the path to hell, God will always reward them. He, God is just. And everybody at some time does some good. Nobody does just total evil. So many people who live ignoring God, hating God, they'll stu still do some good works. They'll let the car in front of them go. They'll open the door for a, a good lady. So God is just and he will reward them here on earth. And that's it. They'll have their reward here on earth and then they will spend eternity in hell. So St. Alphonsus says it's a good sign when we do suffer, and we do carry the cross, and we do have tears here on earth. It's a good sign that our reward isn't here on earth, but we'll be in the next life in heaven. So blessed are those who mourn, for you shall be comforted, and woe to those that laugh, our Lord says. He means the sort of barroom laughter, the laughter of the swimming in the mind of the world, the laughter of those who want to commit mortal sin, who live in mortal sin, who live ignoring God. That's what he means. Woe to those who laugh now, for they shall weep. And blessed are those who weep now, for they shall laugh. And this explanation is explained also in St. Luke chapter 25. Woe to you that now laugh, for you shall mourn and weep. Also, he alludes to Isaiah chapter 65, verse 13. Behold, my servants shall eat, and you shall be hungry. Behold, my servants shall drink, and you shall be thirsty. Behold, my servants shall rejoice and you shall be confounded. Behold, my servants shall praise for joyfulness of heart, and you shall cry for sorrow of heart, and shall howl for grief of spirit. That howl is the despairing cry of hell, the damned in hell, who ignored God in this earth. Think of it that all of us at our death, we're going to come before our Lord. And wouldn't it be very strange for all of us if we know we're going to meet someone that we don't even prepare to see them? And especially he who is our judge and our God and our Savior, doesn't it just make sense logically that we prepare always for that hour 
to come before him to see our judge. Yet many come before our Lord and, and they say, I don't even know you. And our Lord just says to them, you never knew me. You never thought of me. You never obeyed my commandments. You never loved me. You never sought me with your heart. Go where you chose to go. And our Lord is very just. He's never unfair. Absolutely never unfair. And souls who have been condemned to hell and have come back on earth, they said, I knew what our Lord said was just. I deserved the eternal punishment that he sentenced me to. But Our Lady stepped in, <laughs> and our Blessed Mother reminds her son, but son, you know, he did say the rosary sometimes. He did honor me. He put flowers at my altar once when he was seven years old. So the Virgin Mary rescues many from going to hell. That's, that's a fact. She does. But this is what we... This, this beatitude speaks of. Blessed are those who mourn, that is, listen to some of the fathers of the church. This grief, too, has its, two de has its own degrees, like the rest of the beatitudes. They are here called blessed mourners, who bear with patience the troubles and sorrows sent or permitted to come upon them by God. So says St. Gregory of Nyssa, St. Augustine, But more blessed are those who mourn and weep on account of their own or others' sins, says St. John Chrysostom, St. Ambrose, St. Hilary, and St. Jerome. So the real weeping that our Lord is speaking about is, yes, the crosses of this life, but more so that we weep for our own sins and for the sins of the whole world, the sins of others. And that's why when we see, which is very easy today, people living in sin and glorying in their sins and rejoicing and laughing in their vices, we, rather than look at them as saying, well, they're, they're going to hell, they're lost souls, we should actually look at them with the heart of our Lord, with the heart of pity for their souls, then to pray for them because they're blinded, And they need grace. And that was how the saints always saw poor sinners. St. Philip Neri, he was known to say when criminals would be led through the streets to be executed in the same days when there was capital punishment, which helped keep many good people from going bad and bad people from getting worse. But he would say, There, there's Philip. There goes Father Philip Neri, if it wasn't for the grace of God. There go I, but for the grace of God. And he really meant that. And he would pray for those souls. And all the saints had that pity for souls. And that's why many hidden saints and victim souls suffered very much to save souls from hell. Like, the, like the, that holy nun, Sister Josepha Menendez, how our Lord would appear to her sometimes, crowned with thorns, and say, Josepha, will you suffer tonight for a soul, for a soul who's unconverted and will die tonight? Will you suffer for that soul? Here, take my cross. And she would <laughs> hold it all night long and suffer for a soul. Or a crown of thorns sometimes, he would put on her head to save a priest from going to hell. So there are these many little hidden souls that are unknown down the centuries that our Lord loves, and they suffer for souls. Why? Because they love God and they love souls. And these saints will be glorious, beautiful in heaven, these little victim souls. And Catherine Emmerich was one of them. Uh, jo Julie Jeheni is one of them, jo Marie Julie Jeheni. What's another one? Sister, uh, Jose uh, Sister Lucia was certainly a victim soul of Our Lady.
for the Immaculate Heart of Mary. But more blessed are those who mourn and weep on account of their own or other sins. And most blessed are they who, through grief at the perpetual struggle which they carry on the, fa- the fight or the battle with the sins of the flesh and the concupiscence, and through desire of the celestial country and heaven, and especially through love of God and Christ, lament their exile on this earthly land. So says St. Gregory of Nyssa. So that, that morning, that holy morning of longing to go home, Thus St. Paul mourned, unhappy man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? In Romans chapter 7, verse 24. And also in Philippians chapter 1, verse 23, St. Paul says, And having a desire to be dissolved and to be with Christ. I desire to be dissolved and to be with Christ. And notice that, that joyfulness behind that. It's, Catholicism, is, Catholicism is never in that despair or sadness of the Buddhism, which is, I desire to be dissolved into nothingness and to just become a pantheistic part of the universe, which is God, which is complete nihilism. You dissolve into nothingness. That's the Buddhist idea of some kind of paradise. You dissolve into nothingness, which is obviously untrue. God has created each of you from the moment you were conceived and gave you a soul, gave you talents, gave you gifts, and he he has loved you from all eternity, and he has heaven waiting for you in a crown. He wants us to be among the saints. He really does. And the saints up there intercede for us, cheer us on, to keep fighting, to keep running, to keep the race for the heavenly city, to win that trophy. They intercede for us to keep going and not to tire and not get weary because your reward, I desire to be dissolved and to be with Christ because Christ will not dissolve you into nothingness. He wants to crown you as one of his athletes and say, well done, euge, serve bone, well done, good and faithful servant. For I was hungry and you gave me to eat, I was thirsty, you gave me to drink, I was, I was poor and with nothing and you clothed me, I had no place to stay and you got me a hotel room or whatever, or brought me in. And what you do, the least of these you do to, to me, Christ says. And you know, you see how these words are being forgotten in the modern world, because the modern world is becoming more and more inundated with socialist and communist thinking and liberal thinking. So in the name of human rights, they butcher millions of babies. When what we do to the least of these, we do to Christ. They want to wipe out tons of the old people because they're economically useless. Canada is heavily promoting, heavily promoting the assisted suicide, even now for children. They have commercials with, uh, you know, children-type songs that are praising self-suicide, that you agree to, to get shots to put you to death. It's horrifying. What you do to the least of these, you do to me. And the, all these words are being evaporated in the modern world. But it's the, it's the Catholic faith that teaches us the love of the least, the poorest, the most miserable, the humblest, the tiniest, the most unfortunate, and to have pity on them for the love of Jesus crucified. So with our Lord, it's every soul is precious. And you hear it a lot. We Catholics hear it all the time. God loves you, he died for you. God loves you, he died for you. He he bought you with his blood. You are bought at a great price, says St. Paul. That's the price of your soul, the infinite price price of God's love for each soul. And we hear that a lot, and you know, and it just floats over our head. But it's not just talk. And we priests, we, we can preach how God loves you, how he died for you. But we're just repeating what he says. And, but he did it. He, he actually did it 
on the cross. He really died for each soul. That's not poetry. That's not, oh, a general statement. Because God really loves each soul. He created each soul with, with every detail of knowing your, what color your eyes would be, the structure of your body, the, the formation of your mind and character. He gave all that to us. And we look at, you know, just the simple things of the human body, how the fingers work, and it's amazing. You have to have doctors who specialize in an elbow or knees or shoulders or teeth. That's how complicated we're built and put together by God's wisdom and design. And that's just the body. What about the soul? Which is far more complicated and beautiful when it's in the state of grace and seeks the glory of God. So when we hear from the Catholic preaching of priests and bishops and saints and doctors and, and fathers of the church and the martyrs, how really God loves you, it's, it's not just sweeping poetry. Saint, our Lord told St. Teresa of Avila, I would go through the entire passion again just for your soul. So, blessed are those who mourn and weep in this life for our sins and the legitimate weeping for the crosses sometimes God gives us. And we can say to him, you know, Lord, we can complain to him humbly, Lord, you know, your crosses are heavy. Help me carry this. Why are you giving me such a heavy cross? But we also have to forget, we, we shouldn't forget either that, as St. Francis de Sales says very well, Every time God prepares you a cross, he measures it perfectly. He weighs it on the scale a hundred times to make sure it's not going to crush us. But he knows that through the cross, it's going to be our way to heaven. So when he gives it, it's out of his tender love. But he, he wants us to carry the cross with him. Like the father says to his son, this banking hurts me than you, hurts me more than you. Yeah, right, Dad. <laughs> but, but it's very true with our Lord. It's very true. It hurts him more to make us suffer with him, with the crosses and tears of this life. But in heaven, you'll see his wisdom. And I'm sure you've all heard this, this anecdote of of St. Peter, no, St. Joseph's workshop in heaven. I'm probably getting it wrong, but it's something along the lines of a soul comes to heaven and sees all the, the workshop of St. Joseph. And St. Joseph says, come on in. I build crosses, and our Lord lays them on people's shoulders. And the soul sees all these, wow, look at the size of that cross. Who carried that? Oh, that was St. Bernard, and he's in the glory of heaven now. Wow, look at that big one. Who carried that? St. Francis of Assisi. And who carried that one? St. Anthony. And, and then the St. Joseph says, come over here and see that one on the, over there on the shelf. And it's a tiny little toothpick. And the soul says, oh, that's a small one. Who carried that? And St. Joseph says, that was your cross during life. And you complained. But at least it got you to heaven. So it is, the wisdom and goodness of God, when he gives us crosses, sometimes it feels like he's forgotten us, that he doesn't remember us anymore, or even doesn't like us anymore. But it's simply not true. Because he really, when he gives any cross, it's out of his divine love. And we must not forget that, because it's true. It's, it's really true. In this grief, says St. Ephraim, St. Ephraim excelled who mourns in all his writings and inspires his readers with holy grief and compunction. So St. Ephraim inspires in his writings to have sorrow for our sin, compunction for our sins. St. Macarius, a holy monk and hermit, used to say to his brothers, let us weep, brothers, let our eyes produce tears before we go where our tears shall burn our flesh. If we don't weep now, our tears will burn our flesh in hell. So if we don't wash away our sins by tears on earth, 
our tears will burn us in hell. And they all wept, for tears wash us in this world, but burn us after death if we don't make it to heaven. <clears throat> and, then our, and then our Lord promises, blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Often in this life, they shall be comforted also. Because God doesn't just hammer us with crosses. He gives sugar on top. He gives us a break once in a while with blessings. So, but always in the life to come, he will always comfort us. As Isaiah says in chapter 35, verse 10, Everlasting joy shall be upon their heads. They shall obtain joy and gladness, and sorrow and mourning shall flee away. Truly does compunction itself wonderfully solace, console, feed, and refresh the mind of him who is pricked with compunction. And if there be unadulterated, unadulterated joy in the world, it is in the contrite mind. Taste, and thou shalt see, for as the heart that knoweth the bitterness of his own soul, in his joy the stranger shall not intermeddle says the wise man in Proverbs chapter 14. Alluding to this, St. Jerome describes the departure of the soul of St. Paula. She, he was, she was one of his nuns. St. Paula was a matron in Rome. She left, she left a, a mountain of wealth and a mountain of uh, men who wanted to marry her. And she gave her life and consecrated it as a sister under St. Jerome and she lived in Bethlehem. The convent was right next to where Christ was born. So imagine the meditations uh, living so close to the, where Christ was born. But here's what St. Jerome says about her. Oh, blessed exchange, she wept to laugh always. She beheld pools of tears of contrition that she might find the Lord her fountain. She was clothed in sackcloth that now she might wear white robes and say, Thou hast put off my sackcloth and girded me with gladness. She ate ashes as it were bread and mingled her drink with weeping, saying, My tears have been my meat day and night, that now she might feed forever on the bread of angels and sing, O oh, taste and see how sweet the Lord is. And isn't that the case with all the saints? Our Lady told St. Bernadette, I promise to make you happy, but not in this life. And St. Bernadette suffered very much. She suffered from her, her superior, who was very harsh on her. She suffered from fellow sisters who didn't understand her. She suffered from ill health. And St. Bernadette she was promised heaven, but only in heaven. And the children of Fatima, you remember how Our Lady said, you will come to heaven, Jacinta and Francisco and Lucia, but you will have much to suffer. And remember, Jacinta didn't want to die alone, but she did. And there's no doubt, probably Our Lady came to console her in her last moments. Let me just close by reminding you of what penances are our best. Listen to St. Francis de Sales, and we'll close with this. Many believe that they can do no true penance for their sins except by giving themselves up to corporal austerities. So in other words, people think, well, I got to do penance for my sin. I got to whip myself on the back. I have to walk on my knees for a few miles. I have to fast continually. I have to, uh, you know, do all these physical mortifications. But, he says, but we know that he does a very good penance for his sins, who takes pains to perform all his actions well, to please the Lord, which is a matter of great perfection and great merit, St. Francis de Sales. So that's the key for all the saints, is just do well what we're supposed to do in our duties of state. Students, study. 
and work hard and do your chores well. Wives, be good wives, be cheerful, and, and keep an orderly home and prepare good meals. Husbands, support the family, yes, but the first duty is to be the spiritual head of the family. Lead the family rosary, make sure it's said. Look after the spiritual growth of your children as a loving father and encourage them to do great things for God. Cherish and love your wife. And fatherhood is such a great thing. And whatever state of life we're in, we must sanctify our life. And that's what the saints say. If a man could see what reward he will have in the world, says St. Catherine of Genoa, if they could see the reward they'll have in the world above for doing well, he would never employ his memory, understanding our will in anything but good works, without regarding at all what labor or trials he might experience in them. So such are the words of saints, and they did it with their actions, they did it with their life. So let's look at all the saints who mourned for their sins and for the sins of the whole world on this life, but now they laugh in heaven. Not that they didn't laugh on earth. They certainly did. A joyful spirit, uh, a happy heart that comes with Catholicism. But our Lord means those who weep deep in their soul, deep in their heart, the, the weeping for our sins, Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are those who weep now, for they shall laugh. May such joy be yours through the intercession of all the great saints. Let's pray to them, all of them today, all the known ones, all the ones in the Missal and Breviary, but also the ones that nobody knows, the forgotten saints of which there are such a great multitude, St. John describes, I can't even count them. And they were all dressed in the white robes, washed in the blood of the Lamb, through baptism, through holy confession, and through tears of repentance. O Mary, conceived without sin, pray for us who have recourse to thee. O Mary, conceived without sin, pray for us O Mary, conceived without sin, pray for us recourse And for those who do not have recourse to thee, especially all communists and Freemasons, and other enemies of Holy Mother Church. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.